In the first tutorial video, I showed you how to get up, get set up with the Web for Pentester lab in the Ohio Cyber Range Institute Virtual Cyber Range. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through a couple of the examples in the Web for Pentester lab. Uh, not all of them. I believe the assignment asks you to solve for 12, and so I'm only going to walk through three um, just to get you started. Um, but I will, I'll give you enough to start start heading down the path for solving, um, you know, your the 12 that you need to solve for the lab. So um, Web for Pentester on the plus side, you know, there are tons of guides out there on the internet, on YouTube, yada yada, um, for solving these. So I'm, I'm fully confident you can you can figure out. Um, enough to get to get through your lab, but it will require a little bit of and independent research, and it's going to take you some time. Um, there is also a walkthrough guide. Um, so uh, the group that maintains Pentester Lab, PentesterLab.com, has a you know exercises uh, walkthrough. This is a wonderful document actually in general for website or for web application testing. Um, you do not have to read it. You're not going to be quizzed on this document, though. I actually encourage you to sit down and read all of it because it's wonderful. Um, about halfway through the page, a little bit more, um, the author starts walking through some of the examples, starting with cross-site scripting. So um, the examples that are walkthroughs, um, some of them are easier to follow than others, um, but again, most of what you need is either in this walkthrough guide or in plenty of the other walkthrough guides that you'll you'll see online. And so um, we are going to start, oh, there's one other thing I got to got to tell you about. So we are going to be doing a little bit of uh, HTML slash URL encoding for this. So some symbols um, like a space or a pound sign, um, you can't directly, you know, write into a URL in most cases. So we need to um, encode those. And so um, most of the ones you're going to be using, you're going to be using a space in some of these, which is, uh, you know, percent sign 20. That's the coding for space. And you're going to be um, using a pound sign, um, which is uh, percent 23. Um, so so that's you need you do need to be cognizant of that. So some spaces are going to work, like in the SQL injection lab, we're going to be putting you know just using the space bar, put a space in the URL, and that's going to work just fine. Um, in other instances, uh, it's not. And so if you're having issues, just think, well, maybe I'm using a symbol that I need to encode, and so have uh, you know this this reference or another reference. There are plenty of them up on uh, on the internet um, for HTML or URL encoding. So let's go ahead and start with cross site scripting. So. Um, you know, cross-site scripting is uh, a fun vulnerability in web applications. Um, in, in this instance, there's some things I want you to pay attention to. So we're going to start looking up at URLs. And so you may not have paid a whole lot of attention to um, URLs. Uh, sometimes they get really complicated and long and there's a lot going on. But um, they have structure to them, right? And so in this instance, all I want you to know right now is that anything that comes after a question mark in a URL is something called a parameter. And so parameters are get really interesting and really complicated. And sometimes parameters matter, and sometimes they don't. Um, in this case, obviously, you know the parameter is name equals hacker, and that tells um, the server a little bit about how it should, you know, respond to this request. And so, with cross-site scripting, we are essentially going to trick the um, uh, application into running code that we give it. Um, and so, it's actually uh, in this particular example really, really easy. So we're going to get rid of the parameter it provides, and we're going to actually put something else instead. So instead of name equals hacker, we're going to do name equals, and we're going to go um, script alert, if I could type today, um, and then we're going to go just put a one in there, and then we will close this script. All right, and we're going to hit enter. And you're going to see that we have a pop-up. And so the first time you see this, you might be like, well, what the heck is this? Like, this is kind of dumb. And so, and that's the way I felt too when I first got a penetration testing report for a web application I was responsible for. And the pen tester kind of showed me this as an example. I was like, well, what, you know, why is this Why is this important? Um, and you will see this in your career as cyber professionals. You know, pen testers will, will demonstrate a cross-site scripting vulnerability by having a pop-up come up. And um, the pop-up itself is not necessarily malicious. But what it shows is that we can trick the application into doing what we want, showing something that we want, you know, we could define this differently, we could make this code really complicated and serve malicious links to users, um, we could, you know, give misinformation to users via the pop-up, um, and there's all sorts of other non-pop-up, you know, user invisible things we can do with cross-site scripting. And, and all this does is it shows you 
that um, the application is, is vulnerable to all sorts of different things depending on the code that you want to stick into the URL. And so again, it's not it's not the coolest hack, right? You're not like you know taking over this website doing this, but it does prove that you you could get the application to run all kinds of tricky code. I mean, we could go we could go crazy up here in this URL. And so for a pen testing perspective, this is often where you stop, right? Because you've been able to demonstrate that the application is vulnerable. So the other examples, this is example one. And the other examples um, gets a little bit more complicated. So the uh, you know web for pen tester lab starts adding protections in to prevent this that you need to work around. And the walkthrough guide has some great great tips on how to do that. Um, the next thing we're going to work on, um, we'll look at is the SQL injection uh, vulnerability. So SQL injection is a really cool vulnerability. So in this case, again, we have um, SQL injection example one dot PHP, and then we have the question mark. So we know that the parameter comes after the question mark, and so name is equal to root. And so what we're going to be doing in the SQL injection is uh, we are going to be tricking the web application into revealing additional stuff. And so um, there's lots of different ways to do this. Uh, the walkthrough gives you like a lot of different URLs you can you could run. Um, my favorite, I think the one that kind of really drives home how this works the best is, uh, so let's do name equals root. And then uh, we're going to go and, uh, it's actually, sorry, we're going to go or, we're going to go one in the, uh, in a little print or quotes there, equals one, and then we're going to encode a pound sign. So we're gonna do percent sign 23, and we're gonna run that. And you can see, all of a sudden, we've gotten the application to spit out more data about this, um, uh, about the users here, right? And so you can read in the walkthrough exactly how this logic works. Um, you know, if uh, and and you can start to see how you could actually get really complicated with this. In other in other examples in the web pen te for pen tester lab, you can you know trick the web application into revealing extra columns that include lots of other sensitive data. Um, but this in and of itself is useful, right? Because we know that these are the four users on this system, and there's an awful lot we can do with that, right? And so um, SQL injection again, just like like with cross-site scripting where we tricked the web application into running um, you know, some HTML code that uh, we controlled and not the web application. In this, you're tricking the underlying database into coughing up data that it's not necessarily supposed to. Um, and again, you know, clever, clever attackers can get all sorts of crazy with um, their different SQL injection techniques. And just like with um, cross-site scripting, as the examples you know, move on, uh, they just get more and more complicated. So the web for pen tester lab starts adding protections, basic protections against SQL injection, and then you learn how to evade those, evade those protections. Um, and the last one I'm going to show you is directory traversal. So this is actually one of my favorite uh, favorite attacks. Um, so when a website gives you, uh, let's say, an image, right? And this because that's what this example is going to be. When a website shows you an image. Uh, more often than not, it's pulling that image from a server that sits behind that web application. And so, you know, that server is a, is a server. It's like a server like anything else, right? It's uh, It runs, um, it run, maybe it runs a database, maybe it runs, you know, some web-specific stuff, but it's a server, right? And so just like um, when you, you know, work in command line in Kali Linux in this class um, and you make your computer do things via command line, you know, if you can serve commands to that server sitting way behind the web application and you can get the server to follow those commands, there's all sorts of cool things you can do. And so with directory traversal, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to click this little guy here, right, this little image, and uh, we're going to inspect this. So if you if you right click your mouse and you go down to inspect, you'll see all this like gobbledygook pops up down here. All right. And this is what's going on on the website, right? These are the developer tools. And uh, you can see this is the file that gets called on the server for um, uh, to serve this image, right? And it's this little little uh, little hacker guy here, um, and you know if you can trick the web application into running a command, maybe you can get it to serve other files too. And so that's what we're going to do in dir directory traversal. So we're going to come over here, and uh, I will. That's the end result. So when you're when you're doing directory traversal, if you remember the you know uh, etc slash password file um, in Linux. 
uh, you know, when you've uh, played around in Kali Linux, um, you know, usually when you're proving that you can kind of serve files at will on a server, that's sort of the, the um, file that uh, uh, that you use to do this. And so I will say the walkthrough guide isn't great at explaining how this works. So I have another video for you um, that, uh, you know, is shared in the courseware um, to better explain what's going to happen when we, when we do this, uh, when we traverse this directory. But we're going to back out and I'm going to show you um, if we typed in instead of uh, you know file equals and then that specific hacker file, if we did this little string of commands that the other video is going to explain to you what that does, um, and then we ask for the etc that password file, um, that's what's going to come up. And so you've you've we've demonstrated uh, via this example that we can actually get that server to serve us other files um, pretty much at will. Uh, in its backend. So there's pretty much, if you can get to the etc slash password file, there's pretty much nothing you can't get to, um, which is why we use that as an example. And you just have to get creative about how you encode this. And again, the video um, that's attached to the courseware will kind of give you more detail on how directory traversal works. And so just like with every everything else, every example in directory traversal gets just a little bit harder. Um, and, uh, you know, they start putting protections in place that you have to learn how to evade. Again, lots of different guides online um, to figure that out out. And so, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, again, you could, you could restrict yourself to just, you know, the cross-site scripting, the SQL injection, you know, solve some of these, solve some of those, and, you know, solve one or two of the directory traversal ones, and you could, um, you know, complete your requirements. But, you know, go on and go on and play with some of these others too. Again, there's, I'm not going to walk through, through all of these. Um, there are great, you know, learning, you know, people far smarter than me do a better job of explaining um, some of these uh, other examples, but, but play around, have fun, and, and learn how, some of this works and just, you know, solve 12 and you'll be done. Um, but yeah, I am expecting that this is going to take you a little bit of extra independent research. So um, this is video is not going to be enough for you to get through this lab on your own. So just, you know, settle in for an hour or two of uh, YouTubing and Googling around to learn how to do this. Um, but uh, most importantly, have fun and uh, learn about how some of these attacks work. It's, it's, a, it's a great lab and I'm, I'm sure you're going to have a great time with it. This tutorial was prepared by the Center for Cybersecurity and Privacy Protection at Cleveland Marshall College of Law, Cleveland State University.